Thank you. Thank, thanks uh, to everyone for uh, coming out today. We've got some exciting news uh, regarding the doctor, Dr. Susan LaFleche Pacot Memorial Hospital in Walt Hill, Nebraska. We're very pleased to announce that Dr. Susan LaFleche Hospital, located in Walt Hill, has been selected by the National Trust for Historic Preservation as one of America's 11 most endangered historic places. Since 1988, America's 11 most endangered historic places has identified almost 300 threatened, one-of-a-kind historic treasures. Whether these sites are urban districts or rural landscapes, Native American landmarks, or 20th century sports arenas, <clears throat> excuse me, entire communities or single buildings, the list spots historic places across America that are threatened by neglect, neglect excuse me, insufficient funds, inappropriate development, or insensitive public policy. The designation has been a powerful tool for raising awareness and rallying resources to save endangered, endangered sites from every region of the country. So today, uh, we have assembled a, uh, a group of people that are going to, to speak to uh, this designation. Uh, first, uh, excuse me, my name is Dan Worth with BVH Architecture, and I'm one of the uh, advisory uh, committee, uh, many of whom are standing around the podium today who have assisted with, with this effort. Um, first to address us today will be First Lady Suzanne Shore. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate being able to be here. Um, I am, okay, that's going to be a bad visual if I don't move that. Um, today, I am honored to be a part of this event, giving voice to the need and efforts to preserve the Susan LaFleche Picot Memorial Hospital in Walt Hill. Dr. Picot was an exceptional woman. She was the first Native American to receive a medical degree in the United States. But she was more than just a health care provider, she, especially to, her, to the Omaha people. She was an educator, an advocate, an advisor, a social worker, and an activist. She built this hospital to serve her people with dignity and competence. Restoring it is about preserving Dr. Picot's legacy and honoring all of her work. I'm pleased to serve as honorary chair for this effort and appreciate very much the opportunity to be a part of preserving Dr. Picot's mem uh, memory and legacy. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you, First Lady. Um, next, uh, we'd like to ask Chairman Mike Wolf from the Omaha Tribe to, to address us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ahokage, ambate udach. What I said there was, hello all my friends, it's a good day. I'd also like to acknowledge all the students that are here. What you're witnessing here is a long-waited moment to take place here, and you get to be witnesses of this. We recognize, long overdue, somebody that has given themselves completely the, the welfare of our people, all people, not just of one color, but all people. That was her, Susan LaFleche's, admission to the responsibility that she'd like to own, the welfare of another. So all of you students here, not only are we proud that you're here, but you get to be the voice, the moccasin grapevine, to carry this on out to the peers of your, of your comfort zones. We need more of you at places like this, and one day we might be recognizing one of you. That would be a goal of Susan LaFleche as well. But anyway, everything that's been said, it's already been said. I'd just like to acknowledge on behalf of the Omaha people, the Omaha tribe, somebody pinch me and wake me up. Because I feel like this is a dream. We are a people that's been kind of been forgotten 
And then there's people like Susan LaFleche Peacock that has revived us, even for the, the state that she's in right now. The legacy continues as a result of what's taking place today and the effort of everybody on this panel that made this happen. That's why I say I got goosebumps right now and I could cry because I'm elated what's taking place here. One of our own is being recognized, but what's re being recognized is her efforts. You know, in the old days, to be a chief, this woman would be a chief today because the chiefs aren't the smartest, the mightiest, the strongest, the, the best looking. The chief is the one who gives them themselves completely for the betterment of another human being. And that's what's taking place here. My heart goes out to all of you that, it, that implemented a lot of your time to make something like this happen. I truly don't know what's going to happen today. I haven't gotten on CNN. I haven't gotten a to a today newspaper. So everything that you're hearing about what's taking place today, I'm finding out too. Because this was a secret that I couldn't wait for. This is why we're here today to recognize somebody that had a decency to care for the welfare of other peoples, even through all of her difficulties, the, the importance of another human being. Two human beings meet, the other one's more important than the, the one that's there. And that was Susan Peacock. So with that, on behalf of the Omaha people, our hearts are, are here today in gratitude of what's taking place honoring somebody that's been needed this recognition and honor for so long. So much, much love here from everybody that's here and had a part in this. So with that, I'll close it and we say Gategaho. So thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you for your good words, you. Chairman Wolf. Next, we'll ask uh, Judy Goshkabash, the Executive Director of the Indian Commission, to uh, come to the podium. Wow, this is so exciting. I, um, it was hard to keep this secret, but it was a good secret to keep, and I really am so happy that the chairman could come today and that all of our sovereign Native Youth Leadership Academy could share in celebrating one of our own people, and they, she is an inspiration for all of you. Uh, also today, uh, the First Lady's announcement that she would be our honorary chair of our advisory group, that is really powerful. And all of the advisory group, I thank all of them for the last year working so hard on this effort. Oh, I'm a little overwhelmed by all this, so I have some prepared remarks, and we don't have a microphone, so I'm going to try to speak loudly about what I think the significance of this designation is. This designation of the Dr. Susan Memorial Hospital by the National Trust Foundation draws attention on a one-of-a-kind treasure. Their recognition will help galvanize our state, local, and national communities to preserve, restore, and celebrate the past, present, and future of the landmark in Walt Hill, Nebraska. Looking over the 2018 11 Most Endangered American Places list that we are honoring today, to be among several places uh, stand out like kindred spirits to me, other places. The Isaiah T. Montgomery House in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, and the Mary and Eliza Freeman House in Bridgeport, Connecticut, both hold within their walls histories of people who would not give up. Within their walls, like the Dr. Susan Hospital, are stories of determination and resilience against hardship. Those stories of courage against discrimination move our hearts. The American right created equal we hold at the core of our national conscience has been lifted and lived most strongly by those Americans who have been denied that right. 
we hold to be self-evident. Buildings like the Dr. Susan Hospital, beyond historical and architectural value, stand for a victory of the human spirit and the human impulse of service to others. In the end, Dr. Susan dedicated her life to providing for the health, comfort, and dignity of her Omaha people and all others she served. Her mission was to make a difference where no one else would. She persevered and rose to reach the top of her class at the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania, only to return home to fill her, fulfill her promise to her people. We call this a completed circle, a perfect journey, a purposeful life, or just plain inspirational. This building, honored by the National Trust today, symbolizes her bravery, her resourcefulness, and that great intangible that we all recognize with our hearts when we see it. She was the real deal, who left it all on the field and made a difference. So today, we celebrate the legacy of Dr. Susan LaFleche Picot. We blow. Thank you, Judy. Now we'd like to ask uh, Senator Tom Brewer to come to the podium and make a few remarks. Senator. Thank you. We've had a successful run on uh, a number of issues. Obviously, the uh, the closing of the liquor stores in uh, White Clay was uh, an accomplishment, taking the <laughs> taking the statue of Standing Bear from Nebraska now. Okay, I'm, somebody's making noise here, but. Hang on. Technology is a great thing if it works. Uh, so the, the statue moving from Nebraska to Washington is going to be a great accomplishment that hopefully will be in the fall ahead of schedule. Uh, this is just another stepping stone along the way. Uh, we have a lot more to do. Uh, obviously trying to figure out how to get a mic to work in this building is going to be one of my accomplishments, I hope. <laughs> The group that we have here today, for those that don't know, those in the red shirts, they're part of the STEM leadership group that have started on Sunday and have a combination of different activities throughout the week, uh, tomorrow, UNMC. But the thing to remember is that uh, I'm gonna refer you to you guys as the, the, the best and the brightest, so don't let me down there. I'm gonna depend on you to continue that. But we were blessed today to be able to have uh, lunch at the Governor's Mansion. When we finish up here, they're going to get a tour of the legislature. But what you're going to have compressed into this week is the opportunity to plan your future. Understand that your elders have done things that have cleared a path and made things possible for you. Understand that history. Embrace that history. because. If you don't appreciate what has been done, all of that work that they have put their lives on the line for it or for not. So understand history is so critical. Now I'm a history major, so I might be a little biased there, but when it comes to Native American history, it is so rich and so special. So study, read, and understand what they've done. With that, for those in the red shirts, I will look forward to uh, taking you into the chamber and enlightening you, enlighten you on uh, what it's like to uh, be a, a senator, the good and the bad. But with that said, thank you for being here today. Thank you to Judy and Scott for being that, that point that we're able to go to to get things like this done. They put in a tremendous amount of work. They don't give very many thank yous. But from my perspective, working in this building, they're an invaluable to everyone who has any issues 
with Native Americans, not just in Nebraska, but all over America. So to Scott and Judy, thank you. You want to say something, Trevor? You sure? Okay. I was just asking uh, Trevor Jones, the uh, director of uh, History Nebraska, uh, if he'd like to say a few words, but no? Nope? Okay. Okay, it's hot. <laughs> Well, um, I think there's been a lot of good information shared with you all today. Um, if there's any questions or others that want to speak, uh, please let us know. Is there any, any of the youth would like to say something? Yeah. We'd be happy to have you. Yes. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name My name is uh, Landon Heats and I go to Omaha North High School. My question was, uh, how can we, you know, incorporate this into, you know, regular school curriculum because I don't get a lot of Native American history in my classes and I was wondering how I could learn about somebody like her, you know, just on the regular and like more other Native, successful Natives throughout history that have done stuff like this that we don't hear about every day. Sounds like a good question for Senator Brewer. <laughs> well, interesting you should ask that question. We have been blessed with a number of books that have been donated. And uh, if you're interested in Native American history, you come see me afterwards, which you don't have a choice because you're in a red shirt. Uh, I will be more than happy to help you and get you whatever you want. And if your school needs it, I'm still your go-to guy. Come to me. Oh. All right, so those with red shirts, I'm gonna be standing right over there, assemble on me, and we'll begin the tour.